Parshas Shlach. The very end of this week's Parsha contains the what we refer to as the third passage of Korea Shema, which deals, among other things, with tzitzis. And the Torah reads as follows. This is familiar to most of you. Uh, this is in Perak Tesvav, starting with Pasuk Lamed Vav and going on for a few pesukim. By Omer Hashem, El Moshe Lemor, Hashem said to Moshe, saying, Daber B'nei Yisrael, speak to the children of Israel, the Omer Ta Elihem, and say to them, and they will make for themselves tzitzis, we'll talk about what that is, uh, fringes, on the corners of their garments for their generations. Uh, it's a mitzvah that uh, goes forever. And they will place on the corner fringes a thread of blue wool. Tcheles is a color. The, uh, we understand from Chazal that it means uh, blue wool. The, uh, uh, wool that's blue, dyed blue with the um, the blood of the chilazon, which is a sea-dwelling creature. Uh, and you, it will be for you as tzitzis. Or isem also, and you will see it. You'll remember all the mitzvos of Hashem, the commandments, and you will do them. So that appears to be the reason, or at least a result that we want, that God wants, from the wearing of the tzitzis. And you will not stray after your hearts or your minds or your eyes that you uh, are wont to stray. So first of all, we, we said we'll talk about tzitzis. What are tzitzis? Tzitzis are fringes. And uh, why do they have the name tzitzis? I have tzitzis over here. So these are the fringes on the corner of a, of a garment. So why are they called tzitzis? So either... Uh, because they are yotze, there may be other explanations as well, but they're yotze, in other words, they protrude from the main beged, just like they talk about tzitzis harosh, which are, would be protrusions of the hair from the, um, uh, from the head. And there are others um, who say that tzitzis refers to lahatzitz, um, or hinei zel meirecha kaslenu koslenu meitzitz minacharakim. It means peering or viewing, which uh, would also make sense here because uh, the, the Torah in the verses that we read says, Uri Semos, and you'll see them. In other words, they are objects uh, to be viewed. Tzitzis, viewables. Okay, so what, what's the story with Tcheles? So the, the uh, Gemara says, uh, Gemara Kul and other, uh, uh, it shows up in other places as well, that Tcheles, this blue, so how do we know it's blue? Well, hold on, let's back up. Well, we know that there's a verse in Shemos, Chav uh, Dalet um, Yud, which is 2410. It says, Ves Eloheis Yisrael Kama Livnas Hasapir says, they saw God of Israel. This is a, a prophetic vision. They saw the God of Israel under his feet was like a brickwork of blue, uh, perhaps a, a sapphire or some say lapis lazuli. I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of blue stone with sparkly gold in it like the very heavens for purity. So the, the, it would appear that um, the, the Kisei HaKavod, which is what this verse is talking about, is blue. Let's back up now. It says, Tzitzis, Tcheles, excuse me, Dome Leam, the Gemara says. Tcheles is like the sea. Dam, excuse me, Yam, Dome Lerakia. The sea is comparable or similar to the sky. We presume we're talking about the blueness, because we're talking, and, and, and like the verse says, and, the, and it says, the sea is like the heavenly throne. So we have two questions. First of all, no one that I know has ever seen the Kisei HaKavod. It could be that, um, I mean, there, there are people who see the Kisei HaKavod through prophecy. But most people have not seen, most people are not prophets, most people have not seen the heavenly throne, the throne of glory, uh, the Kisei HaKavod, which according to the verse in Shmos, as interpreted by the rabbis, uh, is a blue like sapphire and pure blue, like a bright blue sky. So we, we have one question, which is we've never seen the Kisei HaKavod. So how is it supposed to remind us of something we've never seen? And number two, uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein asked this. Why this is like this is like this is like this. The Tcheles is like the sea, which is like the sky, which is like the Kisei HaKavod. If the whole point is that Tcheles is like the Kisei HaKavod, so just say that Tcheles is like the Kisei HaKavod. That's all. It's like the heavenly throne. Why do you need these intermediate steps? So you could say 
as far as not having seen the heavenly throne, it depends what you mean by seeing the heavenly throne. There's a Gemara that talks about a gluttonous child who, if the law were to be applied, would be put to death. He acts, he's wild, he, he, he has limitless appetite, doesn't listen to his parents. And uh, he's supposed to be put to death by the, by the court. And the Gemara says, no, never happened, never will. Says the same thing about an Ir Hanidachas, a rebellious um, uh, city that entirely goes to, to Avodah Zarah. And the Gemara says if there's but one mezuzah on one door, then it doesn't get destroyed. And Rabbi Yonah's son said, and so, so the Gemara says, so why is it written? If, if it never was, and it says it about Ir Hanidachas also, never was and never will be. So why is it written? It says, Eladros for Kabbalah Seek out meaning from these laws and receive reward. What that meaning is, uh, we've talked about in the past. Uh, uh, my Rebbe Ravarn Salvechik had, a, had a, a, an approach about this. We'll uh, talk about that some, some other time. Uh, but the point is that we learn lessons from it. Now, the curious thing is that there's uh, an Amora, Rebbe Yonason, who says about ben, both things that Chazal say never was, never will be. He says, I saw it and I experienced it. He says about Ben Soramora, he says, I saw him and I sat on his grave. And about Irani Dachas, he says, Ani Rishihov Yashati Altila. I saw it and I sat on its heap of rubble. So Shrab asks the question. He says, What luck that this Amora, this rabbi, had that specifically those two things that everybody else, all the Chachamim said, no, never was, never will be. He says, Not only was it, but I saw it. I was right there. So some say he's uh, differing with the Chachamim. Uh, but you might also say that what he's doing is expounding on just how much you must dig into the issue of Ben Mora and Irani Dachas, whether it's about how to avoid this from happening or what the other lessons are, etc. But he was so engaged in it, in his mind, that he saw it. And he, what he's doing is he's not differing with the opinion that it never was and never will be, but rather he's, he's uh, expounding on the requirement to be Doresh, the Kabbalah You should seek meaning from it. How how deeply should you think about it? He says, I thought so deeply about it. The, the, the requirement of Jerisha, of examining and, and digging deeper and deeper, is, is so deep that he imagined it in his, in his head. Or when I was talking about this with my son of Friday, he said he didn't imagine it, he experienced it. Okay, I think that's what imagine means. But whatever it was, it was an intense reality that was a cerebral event, a, a, an abstract event that he could visualize. So perhaps what we're talking about here is that the, a, a Jew is supposed to visualize the Kisei HaKavod. is supposed to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kaviyachal. He's supposed to see, be mindful of a force above the world as though it were a Kisei HaKavod, as though literally there is a throne, a heavenly throne that's of sapphire, that's, that's brilliant blue. So when you see the Trelas, you think of the brilliant blue. You think of the blue of the sea, which reminds you of the blue of the sky, which reminds you of, <coughs> excuse me, the, the blue of the Kisei HaKavod, which you see in your mind. So why all these steps? This is something that we asked before in the name of Moshe Feinstein. He says, perhaps it comes to tell you that you cannot reach the Kisei HaKavod just like that, that you have to go madregos, madregos. You have to go step after step. I think there was a song, you can't, uh, can't get to heaven can't open up the pearly gates on roller skates or something. I can't get to heaven on roller skates. You can't just glide in there. He says, Eina doma, there is no comparison to something that you accomplish through your own exertion and your sweat and your toil and your effort and that which is given to you in a, in a, in a momentary gift. A momentary gift comes and it goes and you acquire something with toil and it sticks with you. And this reminds me of what my Rebbe Revar and Salvechi used to say about the concept. It's Machlokas in the Gemara about whether Kedusha Rishona Kitsha Shatav Kitsha Lasilavo, whether when uh, Bnei Israel came to, the children of Israel came to the land of Canaan and they conquered it and they uh, uh, created a status of Kedusha, of sanctity for the land. But then when they left, so according to some, it didn't change the status of the land. According to others, and the Rambam Paskins this way, that it actually, the, the, the Kedusha, or at least the Kedusha that was brought about through the Kibush, through the conquering, left what was left. So when they came back, they they did not conquer the land, but they uh, they acquired it through chazaka, through slow organic growth. And Ravarin used to say that that's true in accomplishments in life generally and in education specifically, that if somebody is taught with kibush, with the, a conquering force, so long as that conquering force is there, that kibush will be effective and you can force people to do things. But as soon as that force leaves, the kibush is gone. Uh, 
it, it's a decent likelihood that there will be an abandonment of that which was, was uh, forced upon the person or at least a reduction in its, in its intensity. On the other hand, if something, mitzvahs, ruchnias, uh, spirituality, Torah, discipline is acquired in slow organic growth, it sticks. And this is what, uh, there's the same message that Ramosha is giving us about how we reach the Kisei HaKavod. We reach the Kisei HaKavod by first intermittent steps. First, we have the Yam. Then we have the Rakia. And then we have the Kisei HaKavod. We don't jump to greatness. We work our way with effort to achieve greatness. Have a good chance.